about it. Hold on. Hit record. Okay. So we've got the pre-order of the book. I've already pre-ordered mine. If you guys haven't, that's what it looks like. And go pre-order it. You can do it on Amazon. Um, also, we know we have Nine Week Control Free coming out. I was just going to drop the calendar that was like, I'm going to mute people. That was a year of autumn. Um, hold on. I'm going to have to unmute you afterwards. After I do that, autumn. Hold on. Unmute. Okay. I think I did. It won't let me. Autumn, unmute yourself. Um, and so what else? Monthly fix. You guys, she has so much going on to help us with like the tools that we have to like grow our businesses, help ourselves, help other people. And so I wanted to bring her on here, not only to just talk about some of these new things that are coming out, but to help you guys to learn more about them so that you can start marketing them more to crush your own fitness journey and to like help others crush theirs as well. For me, I know <laughs> that Autumn's programs, for some reason, just work better for me than the other ones, and I'm a little biased. It's just the way it goes. Um, but like even this week, like I'm like I've got two weeks in between doing MBF and MBFA, and I am going back to Autumn for two weeks. So I know we have so many people on our team that love her, adore her. The workouts are killer, and so I want you guys to open up and ask your questions. But Autumn, I wanted you to kind of just. Talk to us a little bit about your book, what to expect, why they should go get it, why they should promote it to other people, and then maybe we can open up to nine week control. For, are you allowed to talk about that too? Kind little of. Bit, little bit, little, little bit, tiny right. bit. Okay, cool. So let's do book first, and then we'll ask a few questions if you guys have them about nine week control freak, and then we can go from there. Yeah. Good. So what's up, guys? Hope everybody's having a good Monday evening. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me tonight. So yes, the book is the big thing that is launching. It's launching August 18th. So we're just, just a little over two weeks away. I'm really, really excited about this one. It's technically the first book I ever have written. Obviously we have two cookbooks out, but that's very different style writing compared to this type of a book. Um, and I think the biggest question, question I'm getting asked is, well, isn't it just ultimate portion fix in a book? And it's not, it's really not. Yes, Ultimate Portion Fix is in there, so I'll talk about that in a second. But <clears throat> what I really wanted to bring to the book was, aside that not many people know about me, which is my whole life leading up to Beachbody and even some things that have happened behind the scenes at Beachbody. And it's really me just sharing some of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life and how I overcame them and the mindset and the tools that I used to do it. And what I can tell you guys is the beauty of writing the book was the fact that I got to look back on those experiences and analyze them for myself and say like, how the hell did I end up here? Pardon my language. Because when you read them and when you hear the stories, even I sometimes go, wow, like I really have no business being where I am in the profession that I'm in doing what I do. Like you just wouldn't look at stories about how I woke up one day at five years old and couldn't walk and assume that I'd be on a stage in front of 20,000 people leading a workout. You wouldn't look at stories about how my self-esteem got crushed in college so bad in regards to performing that I somehow ended up in front of the camera performing or again on stage. Like, like, so many people will look at where I'm at in life right now and assume that I haven't been through hardships. And I think we do that to everybody, right? Especially with social media, the way it is. And a lot of times we see what is now referred to as the highlight reel. And it looks like nobody has problems. Nobody's ever struggled. Nobody's ever had to overcome anything. So the whole first half of the book, it's not a woe is me. It's just saying, hey guys, I've been there too. I've had my own demons. I, I still have them. I'm still working to overcome them. But when I look back at, the, at how did I get past it, what are the tools that I have in my tool belt to help me work through something like that if it comes up again and sharing that. So I'm sharing those life lessons. I'm sharing all of them. So each chapter sort of is dedicated to one of those life lessons and the tool that came with it. So at the end of each chapter, uh, there's like a little sort of assignment or worksheet that you can do that helps you take control of that type of situation. And a lot of it, like I said, is 
overcoming mindset. Like if I were to go into the book, <clears throat> like as you get into it, you guys, there's also, there is my crazy easy, um, there's the, uh, the crazy easy tips for like, or crazy easy, crazy powerful tips for taking control of your nutrition. So remember, a lot of people need to be like baby stepped into nutrition. Like I have ultimate portion fix and it lays the whole thing out for you, right? It's like, here's what you're gonna do. And for some people that becomes really overwhelming, especially depending on how they've already been eating. So if somebody's really on an unhealthy path, eating unhealthy food, and all of a sudden you're like, here's these containers and do this formula and this is how many times you have to eat vegetables and they're like, I don't eat vegetables and now you want me to eat them six times a day and they look at you like you're crazy and that plan is not for them. So before we ever get to the nutrition plan in the book, there's baby steps, baby steps on how to get to the nutrition plan. Like, hey, this week, why don't we just try adding in some more water? I gotta like, like that. Not taking anything away. How about we just drink a little more water? How about we don't just go cold turkey on the soda, even though y'all know I hate soda and I'm dead set against it. Maybe we just reduce it by a little bit. That's not so scary. That's not so bad. So there's all these little things in the first half of the book that makes it significantly easier that by the time that somebody gets to the nutrition component, they've already started to implement things and it doesn't feel so overwhelming. It doesn't feel so scary because for a lot of people who are, who have maybe looked at ultimate portion fix and said, no, that's not for me. Or maybe they've tried it. And for one, one reason or another, they didn't have success with it. Maybe this will be the time that they get to have success with it. We need to hear things. We need to hear them over and over again. We need to hear them in different ways. I'll give you guys an example. I study gut health all the time, right? Like I'm huge on gut health. I've been dealing with my own issues. I read books on it. I listen to podcasts about it. I do all the things, right? And the other day I was talking to a doctor. I was interviewing from him for my podcast and I had already read his book. And he said something to me that was, like, it was so obvious and yet I was just like, Pew. Um, and he was talking about antibiotics and how we overuse antibiotics, which is how I ended up where I am because I had a doctor for years that just was like threw antibiotics at the problem and I didn't know any better. So I just always took them. Um, and he's like, yeah, you know, and then we take antibiotics and it, antibiotics don't kill just the bad bacteria. They kill all the bacteria. And what happens is it kills a bunch and whatever you're left with, is antibiotic resistant bacteria. And I was like, holy shit. Like, oh my God, he's like, like obvious, like that's an obvious thing. Like if you think about it, if you take antibiotics and it kills all the bacteria and the only bacteria that survives are the antibiotic resistance ones, like that's common sense, except that I had never thought of it until he said it. And I was like, oh my God, this is where our health issues are coming from. Like this is, so it's the same thing in the book. Like I may have said in 9 million different ways, in a million different places, in videos, in blog posts, in Instagram, something about nutrition. And you might read it worded just a little bit different in the book and have an, oh my God, duh moment, just like I had. So don't underestimate the power of always learning. When we're getting bombarded with information, there's only so much that we can take in. Um, so we're sharing, like I'm sharing like my story on overcoming physical setbacks. I've had quite a few of them. Uh, I'm sharing, that's chapter two. Then in chapter three, we go into what's holding you back. You can't start the next chapter if you're always rereading the old chapter. And so uh, that one I talk about how bad I was picked on in my family as a kid and how many times I was told I was stupid and how that held me back so much in my life. And still to this day, it is a battle that I overcome because there's triggers and knee jerk reactions that happen from that childhood trauma of being told that I was stupid. Um, so, and it, 
you guys might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with nutrition? We all have triggers. So whether your trigger is about nutrition or your trigger is about somebody telling you you're not good enough and you're feeling like, I'm, why am I good enough to lose weight? Why am I good enough to be healthy? Why am I good enough to grow this business? Why am I good enough? So I'm giving you a story about my life, but then I'm giving you the overall principle about how to apply it to any goal that you have. So we go through the whole first half of the book, talking about these stories, talking about these lessons, talking about the tools. And then yes, we do get into the second part of the book. And the second part of the book is the ultimate portion fix nutrition plan. But like I said, I've already been ramping you up as you read the book with these tiny little just boxes sort of on the sides of the pages. Here's a crazy, easy, crazy, powerful tip. Here's an autumn's attitude adjustment. Y'all know I love to give tough love. So it's spewed all throughout the book because sometimes we need it. We need a little adjustment to our attitude. I'm guilty of it. Like sometimes we're just walking around with an attitude and you need it kind of like, put in check, right? You need somebody, not meanly, not rudely, but you need somebody to just kind of call you out on it and say like, that's not going to, that attitude isn't going to get you to your goal. So why don't we backtrack it and adjust it to one that will? So there's like little attitude adjustments. And like I said, then we get into the nutrition program, but even within the nutrition program, I really tried hard to go in deeper to approach a subject in a different way, whether it's sugar addiction or talking about the beverages that we drink, things like that. Because like I said, sometimes you just need to hear it in a different way. So it's in there. It's meant for you to hear it maybe in a different way that you haven't heard it yet. So hopefully it clicks. Um, the third part of the book is 23 new fix approved recipes. So lots of yummy goodness coming to us from Bobby, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, cocktails, um, gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, it's all covered. And then the last part of the book is two brand new workouts. So in 21 day fix style, there's a new brand new cardio workout and there is a brand new dirty 30 workout. So there's photos to go along with every single move with the description of how to do each move. But then they're also available on Beachbody On Demand. We filmed them two weeks ago. So got my cast behind me. That way, if you want to follow along to the live video, you can do it. So that's the book in a nutshell. I'm really excited about it. It does launch August 18th. I got to assume that some people out there are excited about it. We're well over 10,000 books pre-ordered already. So that's very exciting. Um, Joan, do you want to open it up to any questions at all for a few yeah, minutes? Yeah, let's go ahead and, and um, you guys, if you have questions, ask them. But like, I think that is, it's so awesome. Guys, you can type them into the chat. or you say, Let's type them in the chat because it'll be easier for me to read them. Yeah, go ahead and type it in the chat and I can either just tell her or whatever. But honestly, I think that like going into it if, from your point of view and like your background is such a huge deal. Like for us, even as coaches, just seeing that, like for me, you're just always such a good example of somebody who just works hard. You know, like I feel like there's a lot of excuses that are made and Autumn is always just working so hard to achieve everything that she has. It's not just like, oh, this is just given to me. And she proves it over and over and over again. So it's such a good example for you in your business, in your workouts, in your nutrition, to continually follow that over and over and over again. And you have that, like, and she's offered so many tools now to help you with that. But um, Laura saying, will there be an audio version of the book? If so, do you read it? So are you doing an audible version? So I actually decided against an audible version. And here's why, because I know a bunch of people are going to be bummed out at first, but, uh, the user's experience is really, really important to me. And so while the first half of the book being read would be great, like it would be read just like a audio book, I quickly realized how boring the second half of the book would be to hear audio wise. Right. And it wouldn't be as useful. Like, like I would be reading you charts. I would be reading you formulas. I would be reading you food lists. I would be reading you 
recipes. Like, can you imagine if you're listening to me read you the recipe? You need two thirds cup flour. You need one third cup, da da da. That, like, you wouldn't be able to follow the book. You wouldn't be able to follow the recipe that way. Um, and then same thing for the workout move. It would be like, you're doing a jumping jack. Start with your feet hip width apart. Jump together with, so, so Thanks. it was actually really funny because the team at first was a little bit like, no, no, you have to do it. And I was like, no, no, I'm not going to. Because while it's going to sound great at first, when they get, when people get to the second half of the book, I think they're going to be really annoyed that that's what they're listening to. And I don't want somebody to feel like they wasted their money and now they have to go buy a hard copy of the book to be able to use the whole second half of the book. So it was really me looking out for the user's experience to make sure they could fully use the book. Yeah. Uh, Kelly said, if I am doing intermittent fasting, would I use the same UPF formula and eat all my portions just in my eating window? So here's the thing, ultimately, ultimately you are up to you, right? And like what you choose to follow nutrition wise is up to you. If you watch the ultimate portion fix home videos, I actually say intermittent fasting really doesn't fit with ultimate portion fix because one of my principles is that you eat every two and a half to three hours. We're fueling our body. We are eating super clean. So you get to eat a lot of volume of food. And I also talk about how eating a large amount of volume in a short amount of time stretches your stomach out, makes you need more food. And the fact that intermittent fasting for a lot of people, I'm not saying for everybody, but for a lot of people, it's a really hard nutritional theory to follow because what happens if you're done with all your food by five or six and then not maybe in the time we're living in right now, but like you have a, you go out to dinner with your friends at 6.30. Are you sitting there drinking water or are you going to be tempted? Because if you're tempted and you end up eating, you've now overeaten on your food because you already put all your food into this little time period. So personally, I would say intermittent fasting does not really fit with ultimate portion fix. That being said, each person is an individual. If intermittent fasting works for you and taking all of those containers and fitting them into whatever time frame you're doing your intermittent fasting in works for you and it doesn't leave you feeling sick. Sure. That's how you would do it. But, um, you guys got to remember part of intermittent fasting is to give your digestive system a break. But if you think about like, if you take the amount of food for ultimate portion fix that you get and you cram it into a small period, you are overtaxing your digestive system so quickly because for six hours, you're just putting food in, putting food in. Like no wonder you, you're in a, your system needs a break. You just spent six hours cramming it with food. So yeah, you probably do need the next like 18-ish hours to digest. But the more you put in, there's only so much it can absorb at once. There's only so much it can use at once. And then some's gonna get excreted as waste some is going to get stored as fat, even if it's healthy food, because there's only so much it can break down at one time. Now, again, I, I'm, I'm referencing this in regards to ultimate portion fix and the fact that we get to eat a large volume of food because it's healthy food, it's nutrient dense, so it's calorie light. Um, so that's what I would say about that. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, you know, going through, so going through the task group of 80 obsession and doing time nutrition, one of the biggest things that you taught us was that like, you know, if you're looking at macros, micros, all of it, if you eat too much of it at once, your body isn't absorbing it. So it's pointless. And if it's being stored as fat because of that, then that's also pointless. And then on top of that, for me, at least eating every two hours makes it so I don't get to that point where I just start craving like, a crazy person and can't control myself and then go above and beyond because I couldn't control myself. Like it keeps it just level. So I think it, that like teaching that habit of just a very like lifestyle approach rather than like something that's so strict is in my opinion, what has worked for me and the people who I see stick around and then become coaches that sticks like that helps them too. Um, Kelsey says, what is the biggest change that you made for your gut health? She goes, as a person who suffers from severe gut issues from antibiotics, would love to hear what worked for you. I know Kelsey has suffered from like SIBO and other things. That's a hard one. Yeah. Um, 
So Kelsey, it's not just one thing. That's the biggest thing. Like this has been a four and a half year journey for me. The first thing was finding out what my food sensitivities were because I believe, I don't have 100% proof of this, but I believe my food sensitivities developed after all of my antibiotic use because I used to have a stomach of steel. I could eat everything and anything. I never used to have an issue with nuts. I never used to have an issue with eggs or flaxseed. I used to eat these foods all the time. But after several years of antibiotic use, because I'm prone to bronchitis, you're listening to it right now with my laryngitis, um, even though you don't always need antibiotics for bronchitis, um, that's when I started to develop my sensitivities. So the first thing was finding out that I had food sensitivities and eliminating those foods. After that, it's been a really long journey. And like I said, the more I learn, the better it gets. And now I'm at the point where, you know, I'm learning even certain things like the doctor I talked to on Thursday. If you guys listen to my podcast this week, I just doc, uh, interviewed Dr. B as he's referred to his, his book is fiber fueled and, uh, he specializes in gut health. He is amazing. Um, and one of the things he talks about is like, yes, if you have an actual allergy to a food, you can't eat it, right? Like if you go into anaphylactic or rashes or things like that. But sometimes if you have a food sensitivity, he talks about the fact that it's about the tolerance level that you have to that food. So like maybe I can't eat a full blue container of nuts, but I could eat one or two almonds once or twice a week because there are certain nutrients in there that are good for us. And our gut bacteria survive on diversity of food right? And so it's not always about eliminate, 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 eliminate. It's about figuring out, okay, what's the worst culprit? So maybe I need to cut way back on that or eliminate it for a while. Sorry, my child is being crazy. He just walked in the door. Um, but sometimes it's about saying, okay, let me get rid of the inflammation and then let me slowly but surely start to build things back up. So it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of uh, researching and figuring out what works for you. But like I said, finding out what my food sensitivities were and, and taking those out of the equation was the best place to start for me for the time being. Awesome. Good, Kels? Cool. All right. Uh, Kara said, how do you address body image issues, especially with young girls? My 12-year-old niece just wrapped up her first round of 80 days. She didn't lift heavier than eights on leg day. She's solid muscle and a double zero in her clothing. So saying these things just breaks her heart. How do you break that cycle? It's so interesting how this topic has come up so many times for me in the last two weeks. It, it's come up so much so that I'm actually doing a video about it in the monthly fix. I'm just following what the universe is telling me. And I guess it's telling me that, that our, our teens need a little extra guidance as well. Um, there's a few things, you guys. Here's what you have to remember. We're bombarded by social media right now. And even our younger kids are on it. I will tell you, uh, my son Dominic is 11. And he's had a phone for a while because of how much I travel. And the phone quickly went from being a phone so mommy could reach him while I was traveling to everything that we use it for and Instagram and TikTok and all these things. And within the last six months or so, his dad and I both kind of realized we're like, Hey, TikTok's going away. Like we're, you're going to be done with TikTok because he was seeing things and hearing things that were really messing with his emotions. Right. And it's true for, for girls and boys. And you know, when you look at a 12 year old girl, it used to be when we were kids, you know, you saw the, the women on the magazine covers and maybe we'd see the women in the commercials. Okay. And even then the body type was very different, right? Like we had Cindy Crawford. She was, she was not twiggy. She was Cindy Crawford. Like she had curves. She was beautiful. Um, so I think it's really about talking to our kids and having an open dialogue, but remembering that we are setting the example, whether you're the parent or the aunt or the uncle or the cool friend to mom or whatever it is, they're watching, like they're always watching us. Um, 
and you never know who they're going to be inspired by and motivated by. So my friend Tanya is staying with me for the next couple of months because she's going to be in nine week control freak. So her husband and their son were here for the last two weeks with them. And my son is a, a guy's guy. Dominic is like all about the dude power. Okay. Derek, Tanya's husband eats really healthy. Dominic doesn't eat unhealthy, but here's Derek eating super healthy and Dominic is like laser locked on him. And whatever Derek does, Dominic wants to do. I was like, cool, my life is easy right now. This is fantastic. So it's stuff like that too. Like you have to look at where are they getting their inspiration from? Cause they can be getting it from an unhealthy source, social media, or they can be getting it from a really healthy source at home. That's why in the ultimate portion fix home videos, when we get into the chapter about family, one of the first things I talk about is how are you the parent talking about your body? Are you the one standing in front of the mirror judging yourself? Are you the one saying, I hate how tight these clothes fit? Ugh, I can't wear that. No, I'm not wearing a bathing suit. Sorry, honey, I can't go swimming with you. Do you put the shirt on and cover up to get in the pool? Like, what is your relationship with your body? And what is your relationship with food? Because that it's a learned behavior. If you think about when we're babies, we just eat for fuel, right? A baby will tell you when they're done eating. They stop eating. They push the food to the side. They turn their head when you try to put the spoon in their mouth. When they're done, they're done. Overeating and food addiction and using food to cope with our emotions, that is a learned behavior. Look, my family's Italian. Everything is about food. Celebrating is about food and mourning is about food. And I've been picked on my whole life that I don't eat enough food. I oh, eat like a bird. And I'm like, because I didn't have three plates of pasta. Like, where are you guys putting it? I can't put three plates in there. But that becomes a learned behavior, right? Like, oh, does your kid come home from school and they had a really hard day? And we say, oh, let's go get ice cream. I'm really, you know, to make them feel better. Fine. That's fine every once in a while. But the bigger question is, why did you have a bad day, honey? What happened? Let's talk about it. What did somebody say something mean? Did the teacher give you a hard time? Did you get embarrassed at school? Let's work through the emotion so that they don't turn to food as the coping mechanism. And the younger we teach them that, the better off they're going to be. One of the guys who is in my um, nine week control freak program, Jose, he's a coach. And I had no idea that he was doing ultimate portion fix with his 12 year old daughter. But I guess she was starting to feel the same way, body issues. And so he sat down and he watched the program, especially all about the kids. And he comes in today and he's like, Autumn, look, I have to show you my oldest daughter. And in like three weeks, she's lost like eight and a half inches and seven pounds. And she's all feeling good and proud of herself. And she's just following the kids program. And for like a few times a week, she'll do like 20 minutes of like cardio with her dad or something like that. That's all it is. They will come around and ask in their own time as well. But I think as long as we're talking about it and we're talking about body positive, and here's what I do want to say, and some people might get really mad at me for this. There's body positive, you guys, and then there is, um, there's going too far past and rewarding unhealthy behavior. And I actually feel like right now we're in a little bit of the celebrate unhealthy behavior. And I'm always very careful about how I talk about it and when I talk about it, because it's never meant to hurt anyone's feelings or judge anybody or anything like that. But healthy is healthy and unhealthy is unhealthy. And it's interesting that when we look at somebody who, I'm gonna use the medical term morbidly obese, okay? I'm using that as a medical term. When we look at somebody who's morbidly obese, we say to them, it's okay. Body positive. Love yourself at every size. And let me say this. You should love yourself at every size, no matter what, 100%. But we still have to recognize that that can lead to health issues. And we want to be healthy. Just like we wouldn't look at somebody who has a medical condition like anorexia, right? We wouldn't look at somebody that skinny, anorexia, and say, it's all right. Body positive. Good job we would be concerned for their health and we would want to help them. So for me, it's always about health. 
That's, that's all. Like I talked to Dom about his health. We don't talk about it in terms of weight. We don't talk about it in terms of the number on the scale. Uh, there's no deprivation, you know, like I shocked him a few weeks ago, like at seven o'clock at night, I had like a dozen donuts delivered to the house and he had no idea. And he like came downstairs and they were opened on the couch and he's like, what's happening? And I was like, go ahead and have fun. Um, and he literally was like, <laughs> he didn't know what was going on. But my point was to show him that like, we don't have this, no, you can't mentality or this is bad mentality. And every once in a while, mom will do something that will probably shock you. But I'm not going to do that every night. It was just a fun little like, okay. And then he was like, are we saving them for breakfast? I was like, we sure aren't taking these out to the dumpster right now. You tried the ones you wanted to try. Cool. That was fun. We got rid of them. Um, and that was the fun of it. It wasn't like, oh, I, I bought all 14 donuts. So we're going to have to eat all 14 donuts. So I know I could go on and on about this. Topic. I love that. Like I used to literally take Windex and squirt, like, and we'd get like a cake and be like, this is delicious. And then like, I was like, oh, like, but if it's around here the next few days, I will literally walk by with like a fork, like all freaking day. And I will just eat that damn thing until it's gone. Can't do it. Windex, bye. <laughs> and by the way, who wouldn't? Like, let me, like, let, and by the way, who wouldn't? Like, right. there's a reason sure. there's not Oreos in my pantry, you guys. Yeah. There's a reason that the donuts aren't here all day, every day. I have really good willpower to an extent, yeah. but at a certain point, I'm probably going to go eat the donuts if they're still there. And it's not about a feeling like bad or a bad mentality, but it is about like, well, we don't do that every day. It's not healthy. So why would I have unhealthy food in the house to eat every single day? I'm just torturing myself at that point. Yeah. Now, now just like I'm literally choosing to step into the ring and see if I don't get hit. No. no I just don't want to step in the ring. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Um, Mariah kind of asked a question that I think you've already like kind of covered, but if you want to dig in just a, like a, for a second longer, like what your thoughts are on people saying that like beach body or like you specifically or UPF or whatever is labeled as like diet culture over that whole like body positive thing. And like, just like your response to that. Yeah. I think that comes from more of a place of defensiveness from somebody than a place of understanding. Because if you actually look at ultimate portion fix, I really couldn't be further from a diet, right? Like I don't say no alcohol. I'm like, heck it, let's have a cocktail. I don't say no dessert. We got tons of recipes for them. But what, again, it's a, for me, it's about health. It's about teaching health. Like sure we can have cake, sure we can have pie, but I'd rather make it myself and know what's in it than eat the poison. And that's the hard thing is that people don't want to just really we don't, we don't want to be hit with the truth. We don't want to acknowledge that there's all these additives and preservatives and we want to assume and trust. And I'm not trying to get political. It's not a territory I like to dance in, but what I'll talk about it real quick in terms of food. We want to trust that the people that govern our food have our best interest at heart. And I wish that was the case, but it's not. Because please tell me why Kraft Macaroni and Cheese can't put yellow number five in Kraft Macaroni and Cheese in Europe, but they can put it in Kraft Macaroni and Cheese in America. If you're doing it in Europe, because we know it's a known carcinogenic, and you're not allowed to put it in in Europe, and you already have the formula not to put it in, why do we get it? Right? Like, so when you start looking at it like that, when you start looking at what's in your food, when you start saying, what is, what is this natural flavor? Is it, did you squish up a strawberry and put it in there? What's the natural flavor? Where does it come from? You know, there's a lot of catchphrases that are used to convince us that things are healthier than they actually are. So I don't think that Beachbody in any way is a diet culture because I don't think we ever promote like, oh, here's a quick fix. Here's a pill. Take this pill. It's going to be better. Starve yourself. It's going to be fine. You know, I think I'm, I'm the first one to tell you, like, you better be ready to work. I, like, I don't promise results without the work. Um, I don't say that you can go eat fast food and lose the weight. You have to still apply the information. Uh, so I really do think that it comes a little bit more from a lack of understanding. It comes from a knee jerk reaction of seeing something like color coded containers and thinking that they're small or 
having somebody say like, this is the healthier way. And because somebody is not in the right mental place to want to give up their junk food, they're quick to judge it and be like, well, that's diet and I shouldn't have to diet and da, da, da. And you guys, here's what I say all the time. There is zero judgment on this end of the computer. None from me. You are entirely up to you. I have no judgment on what you do with your body and your life. I'm just here to give a tool. Like if you want to eat the Oreos all day long, that's cool. That is your choice. But again, just know that there's consequences that come with the choice. So if you want to eat the Oreos and the junk food all day long and complain that you're not comfortable in your own skin and that you have lifestyle diseases, eh, I might not be the first one that wants to hear it because I'm like, but you're choosing it. Yeah. When you know better, you do better. So yeah. I'm just here to hopefully help educate a little bit more so that if you know better, you can do a little bit better, but there's no judgment on how somebody wants to eat. Like, I don't know if Steph's on this call and hopefully she's okay with me saying this, but Steph is one of my newer coaches and she has suffered with an eating disorder. Um, and she looked at ultimate portion fix, like the way it was, you know, just read to her or whatever before she signed up with me. And she was like, Oh, it seems like it's like some, you know, whatever, like gimmick. Um, and she said that she found so much freedom through it, like within what it taught her and within those containers being not just a foundation for her, but like a tool that like led her to like freedom. Like, it seems like you're like, constraining yourself, but you're actually giving yourself freedom. And I think that I've learned the same thing through them is that it's like, it, it tells you like, I'm doing the right thing and you can just follow it without thinking. Yeah. Look, we, we do have a diet culture all around us, not beach body, but like every time you turn on the TV, there's a new diet and the celebrity followed this new way of eating and lost all this weight and that sort of thing. So it's hard not to look at another new way of eating and assume that it's not another fad diet and to not be skeptical about it. That's where you have to do your research. And I will say also, it's not going to be for everybody. For some people, it will feel restrictive and it won't work for them. And that, you know, like we're all different. But I actually have been shocked over the years at the amount of people like I could have never dreamed. And, you know, I was a dance major, you guys. So while I never had my own, like I never had an eating disorder, anorexia, bulimia, nothing like that. I went to school with a lot of girls that did. And it was scary to watch. It was scary to see them step into class looking so frail. And um, the amount of people that have come up to me at our big events at summits and, and cruise ships and success club and said, you know, I've been in and out of treatment centers my whole life. I've had eating disorders, disorders my whole life. And this is the first time I have freedom around food. That is still a hard, like it's a hard one for me to even process because never in a million years when I was creating the system, I just wanted it to be like, look, you guys don't have to starve and you don't have to give up the junk food. And like, if we just do a little moderation here and there. So it's pretty amazing to hear people say that it has helped give them the control back and the power back. It's huge impact. Yeah. Uh, this is a pretty personal one, but 67 years old, I have a hard time eating all the containers on plan B. Should I do plan A instead? <laughs> So Sandy, it, it depends. Here's the thing. The program is written, obviously, the way it's written, and it's written to be followed the way it's written. The, and there is like a little bit of a list that I tell people to go through before they just assume um, that they need to drop down a plan or something like that, which is to look at the foods that you are eating. Are you eating foods that sit really heavy? Are you eating a little too far apart? Um, you know, if you're eating steak and potatoes every day, that's going to sit heavier than fish and a salad. So if you're eating, you know, an apple, which is a little more fibrous than berries, it's going to sit heavier. So there's definitely ways that you can look at the containers and say, what might be a lighter option? What might be an option that's a little easier to digest? Uh, I also ask people to look at how much liquid they're drinking. Not, not, I'm not necessarily saying water, but liquid because people will drink a good amount of water, but they will drink a lot of coffee or a lot of tea or a lot of soda. And it's still something in your stomach. So it's going to fill you up to a certain extent. So if you're drinking too much coffee, which by the way, 
can curb your appetite. Maybe it's time to come back on that a little bit. So there's a lot of things to look at before you just say, I can't eat all of these. Let me drop down to plan A. And what I would say is to try to adjust that a little bit because plan A and B just aren't that many containers. They're not. It's like two containers. And yeah. like, are you drinking, are you eating all your yellows? But get, like, you know what I mean? But like maybe not getting to your greens. Like that's like another thing. Yes. And that is my favorite when people are like, oh, I ate almost all my containers, but I had three greens left. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Balance. We got to eat a few more of those greens. I think that's where the time nutrition plan really comes into play is because if you can wake up and eat within 30 minutes of waking up and then you know the containers and you're doing that, I think it'll help you to get all your containers in. And then if you really can't eat everything on your plate, like then just don't eat everything on your plate. Yeah. Um, I'm not looking for people to eat till they puke. That's for sure. <laughs> but, but we also have a mentality of that's too much food. And a lot of times that's what's holding people back. They just look at it and say, that's too much food. And so they mentally say, I'm full. Like I shouldn't eat that anymore. It's too much. It's too much. When really their body needs it and it would actually thrive more from getting a little bit more nutrients. So we got to get out of our own way a little bit. 100%. Um, when doing UPF, I sometimes feel like I can eat more veggies if I want. How wrong is that? Look, out of all the things that you could potentially overeat on, is vegetables a bad one? Not really. It de as long as you're not, here's the thing, as long as you're not like drenching them in a salad dressing or olive oil and salt and pepper or something like that, if you ate an extra green of salad or an extra green of some carrots and cucumbers, is it the end of the world? Uh, no, not at all. But most people are not overeating on vegetables. But if you are, cool. Like if you get to the end of the day and you are still hungry, that would be what I would want you to go choose is eat some more veggies. Nobody likes that answer because they want another yellow, but go eat. I mean, I do it. It happens a lot to me at the end of the day. Sometimes I just need like a crunch. I'm hungry. Maybe I worked out a little more than I realized that day. And my body is just looking for something. I go for the vegetables. So yeah, that, that's not going to be the one that's going to make or break your results. Shaylee wrote this, wrote this to me privately, but I asked her if it was okay if I shared with you and it was directed towards you, but she asked me if it was okay. Like, to, so I'm just gonna share it. She okay. said, um, I always love how inspirational you are in your workouts. I've taken your saying, you have the power to change the outcome of a situation by how you react to it by heart and have been spreading the bit of knowledge with people all the time. With that being said, can you give us a good note to end this call on um, of how we can get motivated again, maybe if we've lost that motivation in all aspects of life or what you do in those cases? Um, so really a question of, of if you feel like a little lost or a little not motivated at the moment, um, what do you do to get back on track and how do, you do, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so you guys, here's what I'm gonna say. You're not always gonna be motivated. You're just not. So you have to learn to be disciplined. And when it comes down to discipline, I learned it at a young age. Again, I talk about it in the book because I was a dancer and I was a competitive dancer. And if you wanted to make that competition team and you wanted a shot at the trophy, you were going to have to be disciplined and you were going to dance and you're going to dance and you're going to practice. And you weren't going to practice till you got it right. You're going to practice till you couldn't get it wrong. And it was the same thing as a fitness competitor. I was reminded again, like that wasn't about motivation. That was about dedication and discipline. There were plenty of days where my body hurt and I didn't want to do it. There were days where I was in the gym crying on the floor, like not laying on the floor, but crying while I lifted the weights. Mind you, this is the gym I didn't just work out at. This is the gym that I worked at. So people who know me, who train with me, Autumn's bicep curling and they're like, why are tears streaming down her face? Because I was so tired. My body was so beaten down. But I knew what the goal was. It, this is why your why is so important because when you're not motivated, you can be disciplined by your why. If, if you're having a day here, I'll use food as an example. You're having a day. Yes. Yeah. Your goal is that you want to lose weight, right? Like, let's say that, oh, my goal, I want to lose 10 pounds. That's, that's as deep as you decide to go with your why. Then you have a real crap day, right? You're tired of being at home. The kids are driving you nuts, whatever. By the end of the day, all you want is a glass of wine and some chocolate. I want to lose 10 pounds is probably not going to be enough to make you care not to have that wine and chocolate. 
But if you go deeper than that, if it's about your health, if it's about a deeper goal, if it's about, I want to be here for my kids, if it's about, I'm tired of feeling this way, I'm tired of not sleeping well, or I'm tired of not having energy. And you say, I know how that wine makes me feel. It keeps me up actually, instead of helping me go to sleep or that chocolate makes me feel. I always ask myself, is it going to bring me one step closer or one step further away from my goal? That's it. There, there's the discipline. Because if I just take the second to answer that question, if I say it's going to bring me one step away from my goal, I'm not going to go do it. Like I'm just not going to go do it. And if there was a very rare occasion where I were to do it, it would be me going, I'm okay with that today. It's been a really hard day. So maybe I didn't save a yellow today and I really want the glass of wine to unwind. And it's not going to bring me one step closer to my goal, but I'm only going to have the one glass. So maybe today I broke even. Maybe today I didn't take a step forward. Maybe I stayed in place. But if I ask myself that question, will it get me one step closer to my goal or not? It's usually all I need to keep me on track. And let me tell you, I got to be on track right now. I got to film nine week control freak in three weeks. Okay. It doesn't mean the temptation. Listen, the kids were making s'mores out by the fire pit a few nights ago. And I was like, Ugh. and I had to sit there and say, is it going to bring you one step closer, one step further away? I don't want to show up on set not looking and feeling my best. I said, it's going to bring me one step further away. I'm going to pay for that one tomorrow if I eat it. So not today. It doesn't mean I won't enjoy a s'more later at some point, but it just, not when you're trying to look your best for filming. I think that, you know, and, and honestly, like, I, I feel like I like, you know, this about me, I'm like this. Right. And so there's times where I'm like, it's summer, fuck it. I'm doing whatever. <laughs> there's times where I'm like, wait, no, I really don't feel good. And this is like detrimental to my business. Like you need to rein your shit in. And, and I'm at that point right now. And it's like, um, I start thinking to myself, like, well, could you help more people? And could you build a bigger income by, doing this consistently and that's like the question that I run through my head when I do it it's not just about me it's about everybody else around me and it's about showing them too that they can do it so um I think that that's like it is it's about finding that one question or that one thing that you can like just kick yourself with to be like mm, this is worth it right now well and let me say this because that mentality right like you used summer as an example it's summer so I don't know if I get people be like ah it's my autumn no I'm just kidding <laughs> The kids will be like, ah, it's, you know, people will be like, ah, it's my kid's birthday. So fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. it, it's this occasion. So F it, yes. right? that is probably the biggest thing that screws us up because Don't disagree. Not, it's an all or nothing mentality. It's like, it's like a, okay, well it's summer. So screw it. I'm going to let it all go. But mind you, then what happens when you, when you say screw and let it all go? You might have enjoyed the beer or the cocktails in the moment, but every time you do it, you feel a little bit worse. Guilty. Yeah. Yes. You're stressed out about it. You're <laughs> sitting there calculating how much longer it's going to take you to get back on point every right. time you do it. Instead of just being like, hey, it's summer. Instead of screw it, be like, cool. I'm going to still do what I did in the winter. I'm still going to enjoy the cocktail here and there, but I'm going to do it within the boundaries that keep me healthy. But happy. because, we, yes, and happy, but because we we have this learned mentality about food and celebration and I deserve, I deserve to be able to have five beers. I deserve to eat the big slice of cake instead of just a few bites. Like as if, we have the mentality as if somebody, like some random person over here is making it bad. Like, like, oh, it's Autumn's fault that cake is bad for me. I didn't make the calories in the cake. I didn't say that's what it is. I didn't make the beer bad, like the beer have the calories. It just is. It's just, you guys, it just is. There's science. This has this many calories and this many sugars and this many additives and preservatives. And it takes this much exercise and this much eating right to undo this behavior. So if we get rid of that all or nothing mentality and we're like, hey, let me enjoy it without going off the rails. And by the way, let me also not go the other way and go like, oh my God, I can't ever have a beer or I can't ever have a dessert because I have to be locked down. Yeah. And the only way to have a, feel good about my body is to be locked down. That's the issue. It's that all or nothing mentality. It's like, 
let's find the sweet spot. That's the whole point of ultimate portion fix is so that you can find the sweet spot so that you can always enjoy all the things because we could probably come up with a holiday every day of the year. I can. For sure. I could tell you every day if you wanted me to. <laughs> You know, you're like, it's my Aunt Sue's grandma's birthday. It's my best friend's cousin's graduation. It's tequila. It's National Tequila Day. Tequila it's Day. It's pizza day. It's cookie day. It's cookie and ice cream. Like, yeah. There's always the thing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to end it on this question because we're almost up on an hour. Okay. Um, and this is just, I know that you've recommended some ladies to bump up a plan when doing AD Obsession. Why is that? So that was from Becca Hunter, who's done EV obsession a few times. She even did, did it when I think she was pregnant. Like, damn, damn good. Um, so here's the thing: people have taken that, people have taken that one and run wild with it. It started off in our ultimate portion fix coach group, coach test group, where we were in phase three. So mind you, people had already been working out for eight weeks, hardcore, six days a week, an hour at a time in their weight loss zone. They had lost a bunch of weight, put on a bunch of muscle, plus they're doing regular life. And they were sort of down to these last couple of pounds and the scale wasn't moving very much. And so I would say, how are you feeling? Are you sleeping? Eh, yeah. Are you crabby? Kind of. Do you find yourself hungry all the time? Little bit. Okay. It might be time to go up a bracket. And really, what that really means is, have you calculated, first of all, some people hadn't calculated in maintenance yet. So I'd say, calculate into maintenance. And they would be like, but I'm not ready to maintain. I want to lose five more pounds. Well, that goes into the whole, we have to stop setting just a number on the scale as our end goal. Because, you know, you might think you want to weigh 115 pounds, but really 120 looks fabulous. You feel fabulous. And that's where your body wants to sit. But in your mind, it's not good enough because you need to get down to this 115 that you randomly picked out of the air. So it was more for people going, okay, you're crabby, you're tired, you're not sleeping well, the scale's not moving, you're eating all the containers, let's bump up to maintenance and see what happens. And they'd bump up to maintenance and all of a sudden the weight would start falling off. Great. That's what we want. Your body needed a little bit more fuel to let go of a little bit more fat. Somehow that has turned into me seeing a bunch of people give the advice of like, oh, well, if you have 10 pounds to lose, you're supposed to eat maintenance. And I'm like, no, no, that's never what I said. That's not how, it, well, that's not how science works. If you want to lose weight, you have to eat at a deficit. But very specific training, like an athlete, 80-day obsession, hour-long workouts, six days a week for 13 weeks. Sometimes we need a little adjustment in there. I know. I think like three weeks into the eight day test group, I had been eating a plan B. And even though I wasn't supposed to recalculate until the next week, I was feeling tired. I was kind of bonking in my workouts and my weight had kind of stabilized. And you were like, go up. And I was like, you want me to what? <laughs> you want me to eat more? I can't do that. I need to lose weight. And I did. And then the pounds started dropping off again. And so I do think it's more about how you're feeling and like, you can, t I think you can tell, like if you have headaches and you feel foggy and you're not sleeping and you're bonking in your workouts and like, you're not moving on the scale and you're doing all these things, like you're probably not doing the right thing. Like, and so I think it's from there, not just, oh, you're doing ADD obsession, so just eat more. Correct. That's yeah. not always the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then last question, just because it just came in. Kay Casey wants to know, what bracket do you eat in, Autumn? Um, I eat in B and sometimes I eat in C. So during 80 Day Obsession, I was mostly eating in C because for me, I'm what they call a hard gainer. It's really hard for me to keep muscle mass on. Um, I'm just I'm just small. My parents are small, if you saw them. like. I, I have the a body of a dancer. I grew up dancing. I was a competitive dancer. I was a ma dance major in college. So to keep a certain amount of muscle mass on requires more fuel for me, but it requires more fuel with a lot of exercise. So 80 day obsession, hour long workouts or fitness competitor. Yes, I eat about 21 to 2200 calories. Right now, nine week control freak, I'm eating in plan B and I'm perfectly happy there. I will never eat in plan A. I will kill people. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, for, sure, for real. I will too, and I just don't think anybody should eat Plan A. And I know that you made Plan A, and it's your thing, but I just I hate Plan Listen, A. I hate I'm not a huge fan of Plan A. I didn't totally make Plan A, but I am not the only pal that that is. But there are some people that do great in plan A and they like barely want to even eat what's in plan A. So it is good for people. I'm not saying it's a bad plan. I'm just saying for me, because of how active I am, I would never survive in yeah. plan A, nor would anybody in my household. Agreed. Um, so you have five minutes. Tell okay. us just one, two, whatever we need to know about nine week, why we should be so freaking I'm pumped about this because I am pumped about this. So I'm glad you're pumped about it. There, I'm not allowed to say a whole lot right now. Yeah, more that's why I left it to last minute. It was just a couple minutes. So just go. More than what was shared in the sizzle. But what I will say is I think it's going to be the best time you ever had. Uh, it's like nothing we've ever had. And I am beyond excited about it. Beyond excited to share it with everybody the more we get like into it. So um, you know, fun new equipment. I know here's, here's what's going to happen. People are going to see the equipment. They're going to be like, ah, equipment. I don't want to spend my money, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to give the same thing that I say all the time, which is like, if you're serious about it, you have to invest a little bit. Like you could pay a hundred dollars a month for a gym membership every single month, or you can buy the dang challenge pack that has the equipment. You're going to see the equipment in other programs. Like we've already seen the step in Sean's program. Um, so, you know, how bad do you want it? Kara just said, take my money now. <laughs> so I think that's funny. But I will say, you guys, that just even when she, ah! I, mean, <laughs> I will just say, even what she just said right there helped me so much with the 80 day launch. Like, if you want the freaking result, do what I just did. I say, do performance line. I say, do this. I say, get this. And you guys, when you have that confidence behind the program that you're launching, people just do it, right? So that's really awesome. I also you, really, you guys, even though Carl would kill me for saying this, you can't do nine week control freak without the equipment. It's not designed that way. I begged. You don't even understand. Let me just tell you my blood, sweat, and tears went even into getting this equipment. And when I say I had to go to like, you know, they say go to the mattresses. I had to go to the mattresses. <laughs> to get this equipment. <laughs> I, I had to fight to get this equipment, but I fight for a reason. I fight because I'm trying to bring you guys something new and original and that doesn't look like everything we've already done. And I myself, this is my 10th program with Beachbody. If you don't want it to look like the other nine, I got to bring you a different piece of equipment that we haven't had before. Yeah. So just know I fought so hard to bring this to you guys. Perfect. And I've literally been working on it for so long. And I am, like I said, it's so fun. Tanya can tell you it's so uh, fun. Postpartum. So I've got Kat on here who is actually in the cast for Bar Blend uh, pre nice. or postpartum. Um, she's asking, when is it releasing? Do we have an actual date or is it just January or? Uh, coaches in December and then it'll go to our customers in January. So coaches will get it first. Um, and anybody that hit success club in July, our success starters will all be in the coach test group in September. Nice. So hopefully you have some people on your team that hit it, that can talk about it a little yeah. bit more. Cool. And then, so postpartum, you think like four months postpartum could do it? Yeah, as long as you've been cleared from your doctor, as long as you don't have complications, um, you know, here's what I'm also going to say. I was shocked with 80 day obsession, right? Like I said, it, you have to have a certain level of fitness to do 80 day obsession. And then a bunch of people proved me wrong. So I was like, well, insert foot. Um, but I'm still going to say this. I'm still going to say it's not 21 day fix beginner level. There is a challenge to it, but cat is back. Okay, modifier cat from 21 Day Fix Never. is doing it. So if my girl cat is doing it at 52 years old and kicking butt, and there's nobody in the cast that's going to be younger than 40 doing it, so how about that? Um, you can do it. Like the whole point, the whole name, nine like control freak, is about you taking control. So anybody can do it. Oh, I know you're hungry. My dog's whining at me. Um, 
So, so if you go into it, like, just like I said, if you go into it that to it with that mentality, like I said, an 80 day obsession, which is if you just go in with, I'm going to do the best I can and push as hard as I can and work to get better every day, then anybody can do it because you'll only get better. We're so excited. We're so excited for it. Everybody go pre-order Autumn's book immediately. Give her so much support and love because she's always giving us so many tools and so much love and support. And so we want to do that right back for her. I am so excited about that. So excited about the new program. I have a request. This is my request to all of you guys because I love you guys so much and I'm going to ask for your help. So we are trying very hard to have the book. We're trying very hard to have the book hit the New York Times bestseller list. One of the ways that they're determining that right now, because people can't go do media tours because you can't travel, is the New York Times is really looking at social media. But they look at social media specifically the week of the book launch. So the week of the 18th. The more y'all can saturate social media with a photo of the book, with the hashtag lose weight like crazy, the better chance we have. And that really benefits, obviously, for our coaches, all of you guys too, because, um, you know, it brings more people into our ecosystem that hopefully want some help and support and guidance with the nutrition and the workout programs. Done, done. Everybody committed to doing that? Okay. Thanks. I'm going to do a quick little boomerang. Everybody just be like super excited about Autumn's book. Ready? One, two, three. All right, Wait, do it once more. Do it once more. I, I should have done something else. One more time. Hold. Let me save this one just in case. Save it just in case. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I got it. All right, cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Autumn. My pleasure. Guys, I'm just, I'm awesomely like so pumped and I'm so grateful for your time and we're all going to work. I already have mine pre-ordered. I can't wait. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful night. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you. Bye guys. Have a good night.